Hello everybody, I'm John Schneider. I'm your host for Jersey Bayshore Country, and today we're going out on a charter fishing boat out of Atlantic Highlands with the High Mars Striper Club, who is sponsoring a trip with the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, and some parents and their kids are going to go out fishing on Raritan Bay, and they're going to catch some fluke, and they're going to catch some dogfish, and one kid wants to catch a whale, and another kid wants to catch a shark. Uh, uh, spoiler alert, they don't catch a whale, they don't catch a, they don't catch a shark. But I had such a great time, and I want to take you on the trip with me right now. Let's take a look. We're going to jump on a boat to the right called the Seahorse. But we could go on any boat and have a pretty good time. Why? Number one, it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful area. And it's a great way to spend time at the Jersey Bay Shore out in a boat. And what's nice about going for a boat ride is you get to know your fellow fishers. And by the end of the day, you're all friends, I hope. And that's why we're fishing with really nice people. And we have a great captain, Captain Jack Bevins, who will take us on a fishing trip with the High Mar Striper Club and Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. Before we start the virtual engines here, let me just say, if you've ever thought about fishing with your family or friends, I hope by the end of this video, or even in the middle of it, you're going to want to do it. Most of these boats, their captains and their crews are very family oriented and will help and guide you during your fishing trip. Now, not all the boats are family oriented, but some are. You, you don't have to bait a hook or remove a hook. You just get to fish and enjoy the thrill of hauling something in. And, and once we're out in the open water, man, what a feeling. You don't even have to fish during these trips. You just enjoy the fresh air and watch the folks catch the fish. That was entertaining for me. But the kids are truly special. And, and I think their enthusiasm is really inspiring. And it's going to be fun watching them reel some fish in. Uh, what are you going to catch? Shark. Shark? You're going to catch a shark? Cool. Don't get in near me. I don't want it to eat me. And, and what about you? What are you thinking about catching? Some kind of fish, I would imagine, right? You're not going to catch a mermaid or anything. A catfish. All right, we'll see. Now, most but not all of the kids on this boat are living their lives with juvenile diabetes. So, have you been fishing before? Yes. And what, what do you, did you catch something before? I caught a fluke, but it was too small. Oh, I hate that when that happens. So, what are you thinking? How big is the fish going to be today that you catch? Oh, look, oh, look, mom's got delusions of grandeur. But that could be, that could be. You know, I have diabetes as well, and while it's not an enjoyable condition to experience, it can be managed for me, and that certainly may not be true for everybody. And I can't imagine being a young person diagnosed with that condition, but, but these young people were very cool. Their parents are wonderfully compassionate. You can see it. Have you ever caught a fish before? Oh, really? And what are you going to catch today, do you hope? A whale. A whale? Do you love fish? Is that what it's all about? Yeah, we've caught a lot of crabs at home. Oh, is that right? Where's back home? Port River. All right. And, and what do you hope to catch today? What would you like to catch? Uh, a Nemo fish. A Nemo? Would you, would you let him go when you caught him? Oh look, a selfie. Are you doing a selfie? I'm good, how are you? Why do a selfie when I can do it for you? <laughs> and they are dedicated to their children. And I think that's the most important thing when your child has any type of medical condition. You become an advocate for your child. And I can tell that these parents are just that. Think about some child you know who has to seek medical treatment regularly. Well, it ain't easy, and the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation is in Shrewsbury, that's for Central Jersey, that's the office we should connect with. And they represent the importance of finding a cure. Obviously, you can certainly help if you are so moved, 
Uh, if you like this video and you can contribute to them because you like this video, that would be cool too. I support their critical role in an environment that's just filled with challenges. The sand shark. Cool. Also known as a dogfish. Nice. Thank you. There's a fish. So this is a fishing trip. I met Captain uh, Jack, who is uh, sort of more than a boat captain. He's <laughs> I was thinking, he's a ringmaster. He's directing activities associated with rigs, rods, and reels. Water depth right here is about 28 feet, and just up ahead there it starts to drop off down to 40 feet. So we're fishing on the uh, right up on the edge of the channel. Let me tell you about the High Morris Striper Club. The members of this club made this boat ride possible with these particular kids. They made it all possible, and they invited me to come along and experience it. It it was perfect. If you enjoy fishing and socializing and doing some good for people, uh, the Highmore Striper Club has meetings at the VFW in Highlands, New Jersey on a regular basis. For the most part, as I understand it, when you fish for a fluke, which is kind of like a flounder, you cast only a short distance and then you drift. It, it, it's drift fishing. You, you can't really cast too far because there's a chance you'll get tangled up with other uh, uh, other lines from other people on the boat. Sometimes the fish gets tangled up in more than one line as well, but at least we're outside and breathing the fresh air which comes off the water in the bay. Let's just watch and listen for a little while. This was such a great day. Keep going, turn the handle. Keep going. A little faster. Oh, here you go. Way to go. Let's see him. Oh yeah. Nice, nice fish. Excellent. Thanks. Look, look, look. Oh, it looks great. Nice job. So are you uh, having a good time? And did you you caught some, right? Yes? Alright, what'd you catch? You remember the name of it? What was it? Yeah, it was great. It was a good it was a good looking fluke too. So tell me, you having a good time? Yeah. Did you catch? You caught something, right? What was it? Do you remember? You caught a fluke, but it was too small. You had to throw it back in. Are you having a good time? Did you catch anything yet? Yeah, you just hang in there. You never know. Have you been fishing before? And you caught something then? I'm guessing. I'm just guessing here. Did she? Did she catch? What is that? The last time I did. Mm-hmm. So what'd you catch? Do you remember? Was it a fight? Was it a big fish or a little fish? Big. Cool. Have you, have you fished before? Yeah, last year. And how'd you do then? I caught a bunch. All right. See, sometimes it just works and sometimes it doesn't, right? Mm -hmm. Good luck. Hi. So it's fun, isn't it? Did you have a good time today? You caught some. You caught a cool fish. I'm impressed. No, stay, just stay right there. Oh, yeah, wait. Oh, wait, let me get another picture from Mom. No!
that, right? Reel away. Come on, Pinky. Come on, get him over there. All right, all right, all right. Big fish, big fish, come on. He's bigger. All right, good job, buddy. We're gonna hold him up in front of you so we can get, take your picture. Perfect, and what are you gonna name him? Oh, here we go. Yay, nice. Excellent. Are you happy? He caught a good fish. Very good, congratulations. about time to get going here. I, you know, I, I had such a great time on that trip, and I want to thank the Highmar Striper Club for uh, allowing me to be part of it. And uh, speak of the devil, we have a member of the Highmar Striper Club right here. Captain Robbie, what is a striper? A striper is a striped bass. Uh, at this time of the year, we have fluke. The bluefish should be around. They're returning now from spawning. Um, striped bass, naturally. The baby bluefish are starting right now to snappers, which is great to take a kid fishing. Um, snappers right now, you can catch them on almost any dock along the bay shore or up the rivers. It's uh, very small hooks, very light tackle. The kids can handle it. It's very easy. The fish are six, eight inches long. The only thing is they are bluefish, so there is a limit on them, not a size limit. You're allowed to keep 15 of them. And I personally don't eat fish, but people tell me that those little snappers are the best to eat. Wait a minute, you're a fisherman and you don't eat fish? I don't eat fish. What's up with that, man? I just, I <laughs> think I hit a bone when I was very small. It's in my head. That's okay, all it is. okay, okay. I'm fine with crabs and lobster and stuff. Okay. And and th th there are there are lots of other fish, obviously, in the Atlantic Ocean that oh, you yes, can catch as sure. well. What, what's, the, what's the big variety out there? Oh, uh. Close by. Well, leaving from our ports, uh, the tuna have been biting pretty well um, inshore the canyons. Uh, a few of my friends with the smaller charter boats have been doing quite well at this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's yellowfin tuna, bluefin tuna, big eye tuna, uh, longfin albacore, which are the white meat in the can stuff, which is good. Mm -hmm. um, swordfish are out there uh, in the deeper waters, uh, white marlin, blue marlin. Mahi mahi. You don't think of this in New Jersey. My gosh, this is incredible. And and, and crustaceans. Oh. You've got lobster and crabs. Do we still have scallops somewhere? Yes. Well, you you can. There's so many uh, ways that you can fish in the Jersey Bay Shore. You can fish from a pier, and there are lots of piers uh, all over the place. You can fish from a boat. You can rent a boat or get a friend that has a boat. You can also uh, uh, surf fish, right, off yes, of uh, certain beaches where you can do that in Sandy Hook? And... Sandy Hook, yes, uh, and even along the Bay Shore here. Okay. Uh, plenty of beaches. And what is the difference between a regular charter, like the Seahorse that we went on with the Highmore Striper right. Club, and a six-pack charter? I'm not sure I know what a six-pack well, there, charter there's, is. Um, there's actually three differentiations. Oh, okay. The six-pack is the initial license that a captain would get which means he's allowed to take up to six passengers. Oh, it's not a six pack of beer. It could be, it could. <laughs> per person. <laughs> okay, no. there you go. Um, and but, don't forget, when you're on the high seas, one beer acts like two. Yes, yeah, be careful out there, especially if you're the one driving the boat. Absolutely. Please be careful. But the, uh, the six pack license is more like the initial yeah. marine license around here. Um, but the difference between the larger boats uh, the part of your head boats, you're paying by the head. As an individual, you can go down, you can walk on the boat, and just pay as an individual for yourself and go fishing for the day. Can you, do you have to have a license on a on one of your charter or the boat's covered? The it, boat's it, if covered. If you're paying to get on the boat, the boat has it covered for you. What they came out with a couple of years ago in New Jersey is a saltwater registry. It's not exactly a license. It's free. Okay. Um, but you go and you print it, just print it out on your computer. And that's just more or less for them to gather information. 
there's no charge for it or anything else mm. yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Five years from now, they might start charging us for that. So wait a minute. If I, if I have a fishing pole and I want to go fish off one of these piers in Raritan Bay, do I need to register? Yes. And do I need to pay anything? No. So the, the, you don't have to. Under what circumstances would you have to pay? Freshwater. And where is freshwater? Is, is the is the Shrewsbury River considered freshwater? No, no. Really? That, that is still that's brackish. That's still brackish. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to uh, I used to go trolling. This was in Florida in the yeah. Loxahatchee River, and uh, there were all kinds of fish, but but typically one spoon kind of did it. You just throw it out there behind the boat and you yeah. drive along. But but here it seems like there's all kinds of different things for all kinds of fish, and and yes. I get confused about it. Can I just get one thing for all the fish, or do I have to have some kind of different bait and different it's thing for everybody? Pretty much different for everything. Really? Yeah. Um, all right, well, with some fish, um, like striped bass and bluefish, you mentioned the trolling. Yeah, well, you could throw a spoon behind the boat, and you'll catch striped bass and bluefish. Uh, umbrella rigs are good, very good trolling lures. You don't really troll for blackfish, um, fluke, uh, ling. Cod. We got sure. a pretty good cod run going right now too, by the way. Okay. But you know, th there are certain other ones where it'd be bottom fishing, where you'd be baiting a hook with clams and just putting it on the bottom and wait for them to come and eat it. Sure. Uh, with the fluke, uh, you're drifting along, trying to cover ground, not too fast, but so that your bait goes past the fish, and they see it, they chase it, and they eat it. Where is the super secret fishing place? In the Raritan Bay. Atlantic Where is Ocean. it? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I couldn't give that one away. <laughs> do you? Is there a super? Do you? Do you have a place where if you definitely want to catch a fish, you will go to this place? Uh, most of us have about fifty of those places. Really? Yeah. Uh, it's the the go to spots, as we say. And is there always going to be like right now with the fluke? Is there always going to be a nice big doormat waiting there for you? No, but you're probably going to get some action, even even with their short fish. All right, I, you have to spill your guts here, Captain Robbie. Where of these fifty places, where would be the first place that you would generally go where you've had the best luck? Generally speaking, right now for the fluke, yeah, Sandy Hook Bay. Sandy Hook Bay. So, would you go out around the tip, or no. would you stay close to like Spermachetti Cove? Where would you go? Oh. Uh, Pretty much right in the middle of Sandy Hook Bay. Seriously. And you got a lot of clambers out there, too, in that particular area. Right. And, and sometimes that helps because they're raking as and they go, and they're stirring up the bottom right. and stirring up the, the natural food for these fish. And, and the fish, do they stay along the edges of the channel, or are they any place? It depends more on water temperatures. Early in the season, we tend to find them up shallow uh, because shallow water warms a little quicker. Uh, areas where there's darker mud bottom because it warms up quicker and a nice outgoing tide after a full sunny day yeah. because it's warmer. Then as the temperatures level off, you know, okay, now the shallow water becomes too hot for them. So now it'll be more on the edges and a little bit deeper water and coming up real soon right before they migrate, they will be in the, in the very deepest part of the channels preparing to migrate offshore. And and I understand is, uh, the, is it the tog? Are they a winter fish? The tog or, or when do you when the, do you go the, after those? Babies? The tog right now are they're there. They're in deeper water. Uh, they're out of season for us right now. But they're a cold water kind of a. Do they like cool, the a cooler water? Cooler yes. water. Yeah. The, uh, the best tog fishing is usually uh, the deep water tog fishing. I like best is like in January. Okay. Um, but if you get out there on some of the, the Snaggy spots, um, over a hundred feet deep. Uh, there's blackfish out there right now. Wow! Uh, I know a couple of my guys who have been specializing in the bottom fishing for the summer, as opposed to the fluking. They're catching plenty of ling. They're catching codfish. They're catching some really nice winter flounder, which you're only allowed one right now, but they're really nice. Uh, but they're catching blackfish too and releasing them. And and sea bass. Sea bass are out of season right when now. When do fish? Eat when 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 is the best time to throw some some enticing bait out there? Is it the morning? Is it the evening? Is it midnight? I go more by the tides than okay. So than we'll talk about that. How day. does that work? Uh, it, it would depend on the fish. Like with fluke or or striped bass, I just 
I like moving water, you know, whether it's to get a drift so that you can present the bait right. Uh, and also I think it triggers the fish more. They tend to face into a current and stack up and wait for food. And, and that, to me, that's their feeding times is in the moving current when they're facing into it. The, uh, the slack water, you'll catch Slack a water is calmer? Or? Slack water is no current. No current. No okay. current when there's yeah, yeah. no current at all. You'll catch a couple, but they're not going to be as aggressive. My feelings. And that. which variety of fish is the fightinest fish? Bluefish. Bluefish. Now, I see guys <laughs> off a of keyport uh, catching bluefish, big ones. Yes. Like, like every couple of seconds, they, there was a, like a season where there was a, a bluefish frenzy. Probably the month of May. But they throw <laughs> them back. Why? People have the, in my opinion, misguided opinion that bluefish are not good to eat. Oh, I love them. Bluefish, if they're... Are they oily? Is that why? They are oily, but if you if you take care of them, you know, too many times you're catching bluefish, it's the heat of the summer, and you catch maybe five of them, and all you're doing is throwing them up on a beach in the hot sun. You, mm. you take them home, and it, they're just mush. It, it's not the same. So so if I if I uh, uh, want to take my daughter or my granddaughter out uh, fishing, um, and they've never fished before, and not, nor have I, what what should we do? For your granddaughter, snappers. Okay. Snappers. And snappers are baby. Baby bluefish. See, because I I used to catch snappers in Florida, and they were snappers. It's a yeah. It's, it's a, a different, different thing. Totally different. Thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, with bluefish, it, it's the snappers. It, it's a name more for the size of them when they're sure. fir first year snappers. Uh, next year they'll be called cocktail blues. Oh, okay. Yeah, it it just goes from there, but it's the same fish. Interesting. What is the strangest fish that inhabits our waters? I've, I've seen the dogfish, which some people say is sort of like a shark. But what is the strangest fish that you think sort of is kind of swimming around there in the bottom? The most common strange fish we have is the sea robin. Oh, those are crazy it, looking things, it, aren't they? It, it, they look, I don't know, they have beautiful blue eyes, they have wings <laughs> and stuff. They do. they do. Did you ever date a, a sea robin? I haven't, okay. no. So are they, they, you can catch them, I know, surf fishing off of yes. Sandy Hook. Yeah. Can you catch them off a boat in Raritan Bay? Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah, can you really? Uh, we catch uh, quite a few of them when we're out there fluking. And you can't eat them? You can't eat them. Oh, you can't eat it's, them. It's another one of those fish that people don't think you can eat. Right. Uh, because they come, and like you said, they're weird looking. They have spines on their heads. Yeah, they look like flying fish. They look like they're yeah. going to jump out. Do they fly? Do they jump? I mean, nope, no, just the no, never. They just have these beautiful wings yep, and they, blue eyes. That's how they propel Do they wear things. mascara? I don't know. No, no. no we got to get lashes <laughs> on these things. <laughs> but uh, no, they are, they're, they're a, a cool fish and they're very plentiful. How do you think? How do you think uh, uh, the climate, uh, the environment, and let's include Hurricane Sandy, which was a bit of an anomaly. How has that affected the the variety of fish or the ability for us to fish in these waters? I remember right after Sandy, um, a few of our guys were out at that time of year uh, looking for blackfish mm -hmm. um, and laying and stuff on inshore, butt wrecks and broken bottom. And the first reports that I got after that were that uh, a lot of those spots that we had for years were covered up by sand now. So now they're not productive at all anymore. At the same time, uh, some of the spots that I fished 40 years ago that had been covered up over the years were now uncovered again. Uh, do I have to make reservations? Can I just walk up and knock no. on the on the door of the boat and say I'd like to fish? Pretty much when, when they light up in the morning. The mates will probably get there, um, or at least the, the, the three-quarter day boats, and, and I'm using Atlantic as a, an example because I'm more familiar with it. The three-quarter day boats leave at 7.30. The mates will be there at 6 or earlier. Mm -hmm. And any time between 6 and 7.30, you can go down and just tell the mate, hey, I'm with you today. You can put your things on the boat. You can put your rod, reserve your space. If you don't have your own rod, uh, ask the mate to put a rental rod up for you so that oh, okay. you have it. Okay. I, you know, no, I, no reservations. Well, what, what, do you, what, do you, what would you estimate is the average cost uh, for a person to go out and go fishing on a three-quarter day boat these days, generally um, speaking? The boat cost itself... Uh, is probably somewhere around sixty, sixty-five dollars. 
but the average cost to the person when you add everything up, um, to, you're going to bring lunch, so you, you're going to be picking that up on the way. Um, your expenses to get to the boat. If you if you rent a rod and reel. Yeah, well, most boats uh, on the charters yeah, it's included, but, but on the head boats. And I noticed a lot uh, of tipping of the first thing. mate, especially if he fillets your fish. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, the guys are really working for minimum wage, so um, I know on the charters we just generally recommend tip twenty percent of what the total charter would have been, uh, and it's the same basically with a head boat. Yeah, yeah. And if, if you're in that range. And if you do it as soon as you get on the boat, you will be well taken care of the entire trip. All right. I like that. That's, that's, a, that, that's, that's a good that's suggestion. The that's a good suggestion. Th thank you, Captain Robbie, for, for talking to us about oh, no, John, uh, Thank you very much for having uh, About fishing. Uh, I, I tell you something. I, I think if you have never been fishing in the Jersey Bay Shore, you, you should try it at least once. And I know that a lot of the tackle shops and bait shops are happy to help you pick out a a new pole if you want to buy one and get the right uh, rod and reel and and figure out what pound test you should have and uh, and what kind of uh, line you should have and bait you should have they've been very helpful to me uh, but if you really want to kind of get a sense of what it's like uh, go out with Captain Robbie or one of these other captains out of any number of marinas in the Bayshore area and try it with a group of people where people can help you and say no nah, you got to throw that back it's too small or or what this is or what that is and as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you see me out there fishing, even if I'm engaged in fighting a fish, I want you to stop me, tap me on the shoulder, and say hello, because you're more important than the fish, and I enjoy having your support watching the program. That's it for now. Thanks, everybody, for watching Jersey Bay Shore Country. I'm your host, John Schneider. Bye-bye.